good, good morning. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I am I'm very happy that uh, this year is, is the 40th year anniversary of MSX. But I, <clears throat> I also would like to, to appreciate my uh, thanks to all of you, especially people in Netherlands. <clears throat> uh, some people say MSX, M means Matsushita Panasonic, and S means Sony, uh, and X is many other companies followed Matsushita <coughs> and Sony, but the, one of the largest MSX producers uh, from Europe is Philips, as you know, uh, from your country. <clears throat> we work very closely with Philips. And uh, Philips loved MSX. I loved Philips. My television at my home is <laughs> Philips. <clears throat> uh, and I, <clears throat> unfortunately, I gave up MSX 30 years ago, 1980, no, no, 1993. We, we felt that uh, when we started MSX, I talked with Bill Gates, <clears throat> and MSX mission is below IBM PC. Uh, at that time, IBM PC was $1,000. <clears> and we wanted to have a computer for less than $300, which is the definition of consumer products in America. <clears throat> so we decided not to give up MSX. And we started MSX. But I was underestimating the competitor. <clears throat> Who was MSX competitor? It was second-hand IBM PC. IBM PC was $1,000, but second-hand uh, IBM PC was $500. Then third-hand IBM PC was $200. So <clears throat> I was very pessimistic, and I gave up developing MSX I made several engineering mistakes at the 1983 when we find out that uh, our development of V9990 <clears throat> was not binary compatible to MSX2 and Turbo. We, we decided to give up. It's like abandoning the children. And it has been you who became MSX foster parents and grow for 20 years. But 10 years ago, I decided to revitalize MSX. Why we decided to, to restart MSX? Two reasons. One is many, many things has happened after I gave up MSX development. The biggest thing was internet. The second biggest thing was IoT. Internet and IoT hasn't been associated with MSX at all. Am I ready to die without doing that? My answer is no. I am going to put IoT and MSX together. I am going to put Internet and MSX together. That's the reason why the, the new origin of MSX0 and MSX3. Today, I am very happy <clears throat> that I can announce MSX3, which has been the project we have been prolonged lasting for last 10 years, and MSX0, which, uh, which is already launched in Japan and had a very good reception. The key of MSX, as you know, <clears throat> is plug and play. It's a very, very fast plug and play computer with ROM cartridge. The, the, when we have this uh, scheme, there is not even a name, plug and play. <clears throat> you always have to plug in the I.O. card into the computer, then you need to load the driver. In, in case of MSX, it comes always together. 
So it was so natural. So there was no name of plug and play, but it was essentially the very first plug and play computer. And MSX Basic and, and <clears throat> graphics macro language and music macro language as attachment to attachment and extension to the basic. And new video chip we we designed. Actually, Mr. Yamaoka is is the the designer of 9938. <clears throat> <And clears throat> he did 9938, he did 1958, then he he was promoted to be the director. Then he gave the responsibility of development of 1990 to his subordinate, and that asshole <laughs> made, <clears throat> made, a, made a mistake and didn't make it to be binary compatible. So that was a sad story, but now I would like to introduce Mr. Uh, Maxim. <clears throat> He is Swiss uh, resident, and MSX3, the implementation into onto FPGA is done by him, <clears throat> and so he is the uh, he is the new father uh, of MSX3, and he has today working prototype, and will give the demonstration to you. So please enjoy, <clears throat> and uh, so. Uh, we have MSX1, no, 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 MSX1, MSX2, MSX2 plus Turbo R, and finish the development. But now we have MSX0 and MSX3. Uh, on top of MSX0 and MSX3, we have three more MSXs. This is the first message I'm delivering on this stage. After MSX0, there is going to be MSX0 plus, <clears throat> which is faster one, faster <laughs> version. And after MSX3, we have MSX3 plus, <laughs> which is also a 64-bit version of MSX3. Uh, MSX3 is a uh, 32-bit ARM-based machine, <clears throat> and MSX3 Plus is a uh, 64-bit 4-ARM Plus machine. And if we talk about <coughs> no plus, plus, of course, what's coming next is sharp. MSX3 sharp is also planned. Uh, next. We we had uh, Spain, uh, DevCon, uh, early, uh, last, last December, uh, <clears throat> this year in Netherlands. And next year, 2024, I have promised to be at uh, uh, Pisa, Italy. <clears throat> and then after that is the Brazil. Uh, for MSX uh, promotions. Uh, these are the agenda for the development. IoT sensor support. There is over about 300 local sensors, which is not interface to, <clears throat> to many computers. Of course, it is very hard to interface into the PC or Mac. Uh, you can do the, if you are a really hardcore person, me, you can interface this to Arduino and, and uh, Raspberry Pi, but it is very difficult and for, for the kids, me, asking kids to have this solder chip, uh, that's always a diff difficult thing. <clears throat> and today, on top of the VGA, there is 2K monitor, there is 4K monitor, and there is 8K monitor. <clears throat> and one 2K monitor and 4K monitor is becoming commodity because a lot of Chinese and Korean uh, good monitor companies producing it. And it's, it's just a matter of time, I think, 8K 
8K monitor is going to be a commodity. So the, by the time the 8K monitor becoming commodity, I would like to support 8K. <coughs> and of course, there is many CPUs in last 50 years, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, and what is after 64 is not 128, but uh, many core 64. So I have decided to, to support all of this 8, 16, 32, 64, and many core 64. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> what's big today is, of course, the personal computer and smartphone. What's big next is no, no need of discussion. Television is going to be very intelligent. And, and we need to implement computer into the television. Not as the simple television today, but the more sophisticated smart television. <clears throat> and, and also there is uh, desktop and portable and pocket market. These are the things we would like to see next. So these three area, we would like to focus the development. First one is IoT, and the second is television, attachment to television, and third is cloud. Next. So MSX0, <coughs> uh, ultra compact modular computer supporting IoT. Next. Uh, this we have realized using emulator. <clears throat> and uh, it's running on 32-bit chip called ESP32, which was designed by an American company and produced by a uh, Shanghai-based uh, computer chip company. And perhaps that, was, that has been manufactured in Taiwan. <clears throat> and uh, next. So these are the, the one of the prototypes. And uh, you can connect many sensors. And uh, that's me, but uh, it's my miniature. I was, <coughs> I was trying to give away. Then some, some people said, uh, you want to sell the name MSX, or you want to sell your name? So I said, no, I'm not interested in selling my name. So I have withdrawn. I have over 100 of my small miniatures. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so all these sensors, <clears throat> if you are going to control these sensors and read the temperature, humidity, and a lot of things, and if you are writing uh, assembly or uh, these calls, it always takes like few hours, few hours. I felt if we can extend the statement of basic to support IoT and make uh, easy reading of, of these parameters and easy writing to the controllers. Uh, it will be, uh, it, the programming is going to make everything more easy. <clears throat> and I tested it. Uh, writing binary mean assembly takes four hours, whereas if we do in basic, it took only 40 minutes. So I would like to make this easy programmable environment offering to many kids, many students for computer interfacing, IoT uh, education. So all of these old uh, MSX uh, key system software is, is, I made it free to be bundled with, with the MSX Zero. The DOS, uh, <clears throat> and also I have asked the, my friend, Nesta, to, to write a new version of DOS, which is more sophisticated DOS, and it will be available when MSX0 is released to Europe. <clears throat> and MSXC compiler and uh, ANSI uh, compliant C is also coming soon. Next. <clears throat> and this is uh, R800, which was designed by us. And this is also a basic compiler supporting full MSX2+. Plus. And I am encouraging <coughs> using combination of R800 and uh, C compiler together, then 
the execution of the program is going to be a lot, lot faster. <coughs> Next. Uh, this is the new concept uh, of software. It's called remote control desktop. You can control MSX0 from distance location through internet. <coughs> I had the once a pro project uh, putting Raspberry Pi onto cherry blossom tree, over 100 cherry blossom tree to detect when flower is blown. And we did it. I mean, we put the 100 I mean, Raspberry Pi on, on top of the tree. And after we installed 100 Raspberry Pi, we find the bug. <laughs> and we have been wondering who are in charge of going climb up on the tree again and change these small IoT device. I mean, so my programmer has been fighting each other. It was you. It was not me. Anyway, <clears throat> so on these ex from these experiences, we, we felt definitely for IoT, we need remote controlling device for updating the software and activating the software and stopping the software through internet. So we created this, <clears throat> and this is, uh, we have many versions uh, forthcoming. Today we have Windows working. Today we have Linux working. Today we have Mac OS working. But uh, we will be having uh, iPhone and uh, Android phone. So all these five major OS will be having MSX remote controller. So that any of these MSX zero machine, we can remote control and show uh, on a small icon on the screen. <clears throat> uh, that's uh, when we execute Konami uh, 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 Antarctic uh, uh, game remotely and playing that remotely. Anyway, next. <clears throat> so these are the screen on uh, remote control screen. Next. <clears throat> this is a real product which we finished the crowdfunding and uh, soon this is going to be available on Amazon. <clears throat> My plan is uh, 2024, I will be offering these MSX0 computer with each language uh, support. I mean, that means like a character set is, is Spanish and, and Dutch uh, <clears throat> and French and Italy and Portuguese for Brazil and of course Japanese <clears throat> and uh, available on Amazon. So you just click Amazon and it will be delivered to your home. And each country, we, we were supporting country by country because the machine has to be verified by uh, local authorities for radio communication. And uh, of course, the, this was battery based so that uh, we don't have to <coughs> certify the power supply. It, it's only wireless communications. Anyway, this was manufactured by a company in Shenzhen, Hong Kong, uh, called M5. It's a very good company, and the president of, of M5 is very sympathetic to us. And we have been doing business for more than one year. And I, have, I, I am very happy with them. And temporarily, uh, I made a commitment to support all the types of product from M5. We will be implementing MSX uh, system software. So there is going to be many different kinds of MSX controller here and there. Next. <clears throat> so these are batteries to go back of the thing. Next. This is the uh, fast product with keyboard. With, uh, it's called MSX Zero Stack. <clears throat> Next. And a uh, new announcement is this MSX Zero card, which we are crowdfunding today. It is the size of the credit card. And uh, of course, this has Wi-Fi, this has Bluetooth, 
and this has uh, many memories. Display is very small, but uh, you can use large screens through PC. <coughs> Next. And this is even making smaller. Next. And this is even smaller. <laughs> this is mainly for implementing into many devices. Next. And the new concept I am announcing today, first in the world, is we are proposing this interface called MSXIB. <clears throat> it's, it's called MSX Interface Bus. Something very similar to I square C, but uh, I square C stands for inter IC. Inter IC the most communication is between the IC so that it is like one inch, two inch, three inch. Um, you must have thought about if I square C can be more long distance. And typically, <coughs> I square C interconnection is like uh, two or three or four uh, devices together. But uh, on the spec, uh, I square C accept at least like 100 plus. And so we, we expand, expanded the, the specification of I square C to extend the length of the cable to 100 meter. <clears throat> and also we extended the adding by adding a current to the driver and uh, it can stack more than 100. So 100 sensor stackable and 100 meter long distance using uh, Ethernet RJ45 cable. <clears throat> That's, uh, and also adding the power, power line jacked up to be 12 volt. And, and, and also we have been very, we have been suffering about uh, the sudden, sudden death of I square C based peripherals. So we, the best way to reactivate the peripheral's death is reset. If you are in trouble, reset. <laughs> I, I have patent for that. <coughs> uh, it's very simple. And if you know the, the, what's in the computer, reset is set program counter zero and start. <clears throat> so uh, master reset is always also on the on the things, and I hope to be uh, its licensing fee, and also I square C has been invented by Philips, so we would like to make to be the next uh, standard. <clears throat> so we start the the activities <laughs> like MPEG. Next. <clears throat> I have learned this from Hewlett Packard, HPIB. And after Hewlett Packard decided to open this patent, they start calling it to be GPIB, General Purpose Interface Bus. Then after they run into the standardization committee, IEEE, it has been called IEEE 488. <clears throat> 50 years ago, I would like to reinvent these activities again for IoT. IEEE 488 <clears throat> is, has been the interconnection of instruments like the oscillators, the voltmeters, and uh, oscilloscope. But the new generation for IoT interfacing, I hope to make it to be MSXIB. Including the name, it will perhaps going to be changed next. And this is the next <coughs> stackable. This is the prototype. Uh, we use DB9 connector, uh, male and female, and you can stack uh, to 100. I haven't done 100, <laughs> but uh, typically people are going to use it for 5 to 10. And here is this RJ45. <clears throat> Next, and it is going to be like that, the stackable portion and RJ45 wire up to 100 meter, and there is going to be a hub. The hub is accepting the globe 
connector, which is analog, digital, the raw I square C interconnections. There is already from Hong Kong company, Shenzhen company, more than 300 plus sensor at the price of $10 or so. <clears throat> sensor and controller is very important for make IoT happen. So by having this and from programming, from basic extension, you just use the device number and function number. So it is going to be very easy to program. And <clears throat> that's the vision. This is the, the thing from the company M5. Next one. And this is the, uh, the sensor from Seed Studio. <clears throat> and uh, cable is, is just a commodity. Next. And uh, low level globe connector has A, B, C. Uh, my connector is high level protocol. Next. And there is this type of sensor which you can get for very low price, like uh, $40, $50. <clears throat> for 10 different kinds of sensors. Next. And about 20 sensor, 40 sensor, the package is also available. We're <coughs> making a special version for 80 sensors. This 80 sensor package is big enough for learning lots of IoT I mean, experiments. Next. <coughs> so uh, that has been MSX0. And uh, for Japan, so far, uh, it is in good conditions, but uh, we will be making, uh, we thought about doing uh, crowdfunding for Europe, but uh, now we have products all ready for production. So instead of doing crowdfunding, we would have to strictly go into the Amazon uh, in each country and start selling it uh, spring, May according to the uh, clearance of local regulatory <clears throat> and make it available to Europe. Uh, make it available to Europe first, then uh, to, to Brazil. And, and uh, am I going to make it available to America? <clears throat> uh, uh, not yet decided. Uh, for America, it's such a big country. I hope we need uh, we need a partner, but we haven't identified. Microsoft is busy doing AI, <coughs> so no MSX. <laughs> <coughs> Let's switch the topics to MSX3. <coughs> MSX3, uh, where are we going? I said television. Uh, television is a lonely device, and <coughs> but uh, television is also the absolute mandatory device for the future of home. So you big like this. Next. <clears throat> and many smart television having this icon. And, but it's essentially an internet TV browser. Is television going more than television? No, it's, it's still... Uh, Movie, movie drama and game player. I want to change television. I want to change the television where you can, you can do many other things. Next. And uh, there is many television decoder uh, adapter from many companies. So I would like to join into this area <clears throat> to establish something very, something very unique. Next. <clears throat> so, uh, MSX3 will provide internet enabled and digital video HDMI and 32 bit and 64 bit CPU and video and audio. That's the MSX3. Next. <clears throat> this is the, the MSX pro prototype and uh, will be a commercial production. Uh, what Maximo is going to show you today, uh, we put a plastic case, and there is three cartridge slot. <clears throat> T1, 
two 50 pin slot and one 60 pin slot. Next. <clears throat> and this is the screen of MSX3. You see on the left, left side is uh, HDMI input icons. <clears throat> Don't you have the experience at home? Every time you plug something into your television, was it HDMI 1 or was it HDMI 2 or was it HDMI 3? Every time I plug something into my television, I have this question. And I always have been thinking that if contents of each HDMI can be displayable on, on the television, that's wonderful. And also, <clears throat> my H HDMI devices is a lot, because including all these game computers and DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, television typically having three inputs or four inputs. I wanted to have eight. So, as an option, we will be having eight input. Next. <clears throat> and these are the prototype, mean, layout prototype of, of the uh, MSX3. <clears throat> and this is on, on the, because this is the prototyping, I use the Jetson uh, ring. Uh, let me show you. <clears throat> this is working. And we are going to implement this into MSX3. This is messy Jetson, and we are doing it. I mean, we are going to crazy because of lack of the documentation. <laughs> anyway. I, I have seen the, this lady's face more than a thousand times. <laughs> so I, I would say no, no, thank you anymore. <clears throat> but but the, if there is going to be zero software, zero software for MSX3, MSX3 is low cost video selector. But even low cost video selector, there is going to be a customer. And as you want, as you wait, that there is going to be a lot of software. Oh, by, by the way, of course, all of old <clears throat> MSX 1, 2, 3, no, no, 1, 2, 2 plus uh, turbocharger software is going to run on MSX 3. Of course. <clears throat> anyway, go back to the slide. Uh, this is one chip MSX uh, 10 years ago. And, uh, MSX 3. One chip, the first hardware to be offered is something like this, but uh, more larger in size with HDMI. <clears throat> Next. Uh, this is a motherboard maximum developed. Uh, on top of the motherboard, there is a module called MSXM. Uh, by changing these modules, motherboard can, be, can, can expand, can grow. Next. And this is the, this is just the image sketch of, of the uh, HDMI connect selector. The three HDMI selector and another three HDMI selector and this one uh, HDMI, the major controller. Perhaps this will be having a decoder on it so that uh, the heavy load, less it's in, in decrease the heavy load on, onto MSX CPU. Anyway, <clears throat> since this is consumer, mass produced consumer product, I think the, the price is going to be very low. <clears throat> Next. And this is 60 pin Yamaha cartridge. Uh, this 60 pin cartridge is also included. Next. But uh, there is an adapter planned to convert 60 pin to 50 pin. And not just MSX, as a ROM cartridge based, uh, ROM cut, uh, as a ROM cartridge can be connectable to MSX3. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be in that business. Bringing the game cartridge emulator is going to be 
belonging to other people's business. But MSX3 can accept other people's ROM cartridge by adding the FPGA program. So it is going to be a very uh, affordable platform for uh, retro computing. <clears throat> Next. It goes like this. And oh, this is also the new announcement today, World First. <clears throat> we are planning to come up with mega RAM cartridge. Uh, what is mega RAM cartridge? Is that uh, mega RAM cartridge size is one megabyte to eight megabyte so far today. <clears throat> and do you know that today's flash ROM is not guaranteed to last 50 years? It might go. It might be gone at 10 years, 15 years, 5 years. I don't know. <clears throat> but a Japanese company called Fujitsu came up with, with a very interesting semiconductor. That is, the, uh, it's guaranteed 50-year memory sustainability with the special semiconductor processes. <clears throat> and so having, um, making a mega RAM with FPGA data and also other data on. <clears throat> and we are not asking loyalty for software vendors. Next. Sorry, time. It's something like this. Next, same size, but uh, I am strongly recommending and st strongly asking software company to include into this ROM cartridge since the size is large. Include MSX One, MSX Two, MSX Two Plus, MSX Turbo R, MSX Three. All of these program into one single cartridge. <clears throat> don't, don't you have the experience when you buy the ROM cartridge and to play your favorite games and plug into MSX1 and it doesn't work? I was very angry about that. But many people thought it is just a matter of course. I kept that anger for 40 years. <laughs> Therefore, I'm proposing people, we need to deliver downward compatibility. If we deliver downward compatibility at any, any style, immediate four, 4 million MSX machine is going to be our customer. So having this, <clears throat> uh, we are developing uh, mega RAM cartridge together with basic compiler, which can switch the output code to one, two, two plus, turbo R, and three. <clears throat> anyway, next. This is the, not the final, but the logo of Mega RAM, which shows, which, which stands M for Mega RAM, and also which has this logo. I, I forget to put MSX3 on that. But if I put MSX3, M is going to be strange M. So I'm still thinking, my designer is still thinking about what is going to be the best one for logo. Anyway, next. <clears throat> and this is Fujitsu's memory. Next. Fujitsu gave me a sample, and so we are designing a hardware. Next. And uh, USB iSQS interface. <clears throat> next. And there is going to be a cartridge writer, reader, like this. Next. And uh, the, my last uh, presentation uh, is, is uh, MSX modules, MSXM. There is going to be a lot. Next. You can stack. This is MS0 plus uh, FPGA and doing a Turbo R running with uh, Grove interface. Next. MSX3, the maximum is introducing today. Next one. <clears throat> is uh, using 64-bit version of it. Uh, next one. This is uh, NVIDIA uh, 
Jetson Nano. This cost more than $2,000 today. I mean, who is going to buy such a expensive hardware? But we are, we are counting that, that tomorrow this is going to be low cost <clears throat> anyway. And you can stack these. Next. And computing module 4 is also uh, loadable on MSXM. And when we talk about Raspberry Pi, next. Many people talk about what about uh, Risk V? So we have Risk V version. Uh, I I ordered tons of Risk V card, but uh, they didn't deliver. So what you see is Xerox copy of the picture. <clears throat> anyway, next. So MSX zero cartridge. The good news is that we are making a cartridge to co to combat every MSX to upgrade. If you plug this in, everything is going to be MSX0 plus, zero. Next. If you plug this in, MSX1 is going to be MSX3. <clears throat> and many, many hardcore uh, enthusiasts say, well, are you going to use just a keyboard and power supply? Yes. <laughs> MSX1 is keyboard and power supply, and we, professional people laugh on it, but, but look from the customer's point of view, if your MSX1 can be upgradable to MSX3, the latest MSX, that's really a good news for people. Because of that, we, we, we decided to launch this next. And uh, there is a company in England called Taos Systems. And we, we signed yesterday the license agreement. And we will be offering the Taos, which is the runtime executive to run on Linux. Uh, this is very interesting software. Uh, next. <clears throat> it's running on MSX3. Next. It's running on MSX3 Plus. <clears throat> Next. It's running on Windows. So, but it's a virtual machine, 64-bit virtual machine. And you can, you can run any MSX software written on Taux. Can be run on Windows. Can be run on Mac OS. Can we run on Android? Can we run on iOS? Can we run on Linux? Vice versa. <clears throat> so, uh, difference between 32 bit and 64 bit, what's the difference? The speed is the difference. And uh, if you need uh, speed critical applications, you, you need uh, 64 bit. And if your application is not speed critical, then it's, it's okay to stay with low, S, low end MSX0. Anyway, uh, since it's noon, and here's two important demonstrations, so uh, I am going to stop my presentation. <clears throat> and, uh, and next is the Maxim. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, so um, <laughs> uh, today we will try to answer the question, can we increment the counter? Can we go from 1 to 2 plus TR? Panasonic was very humble not to call their machine MSX3. So the question is, can we <laughs> call our machine MSX3? Microsoft uh, decoded the abbreviation MSX like Microsoft Expandable. <laughs> We try to decode it like microprocessor system expandable. And uh, I think if we talk about uh, keeping the same design goals, the same spirit in the platform, we have to po follow several, I mean, those trends. So we go first of all about the microprocessor system. So 
in my case, it took, we call it 10,000 hours <laughs> of plus to design this engine. So basically it's a single board computer. Single board computer, which is a microprocessor system. We can call it like that. Then to make it a system, you need some sort of a breakout expansions, right? So it's like, a, in fact, um, to some extent on a laptop, it's like a docking station. So basically, uh, if this board is universal, it can accommodate any kind of hardware, emulated hardware for the, for the machines. Let's say we can uh, compile MSX uh, kernel in it, we can compile Atari Commodore, anything which is small enough to feed the FPGA. Then we can connect our emulated machine to the real world, so the real legacy hardware, et cetera, et cetera, by making this board. And this board is very low cost, let's say. You don't really need to, to have the magnifying glasses <laughs> to hack this board, because actually it uses the standard off-the-shelf components and it's very easy to, to, to modify. And of course, the, the schematics and everything will be, we will, we will be open to the public so you can transgress it into anything, like you can have IoT sensors, you can have wireless uh, connection, etc., etc. And then finally, let's say if something very special about this design is that this single board computer, not like Raspberry Pi and many others, you can stack together. So you actually, if your design is separable, so for instance, your design is so big, let's say you try to emulate PlayStation 2, <laughs> not PlayStation 4 or 5, still this design is huge. And this FPG wouldn't fit this design. FPG is a field programmable gateway, so this like sea of gates which you can program, right? So uh, you can separate your design on several modules, and you and your friends could get together, each could have a module, and you could stack those modules all together in a sandwich up to 16 boards, not like Nisha san design up to 100 boards. <laughs> Here we, we stop at 16, and uh, with this design, actually, you can run your system. So you can actually have an experience of running the supercomputer or you can have a gaming hardware separated on several elements, or you could have machine learning application, for instance. You can, now, nowadays, neural networks, etc. they run on a fixed point, uh, fixed point hardware, so FPG is a perfect, perfect fit for that. So there, this is how we try to see the ecosystem, which is called MSX. So therefore, MSX engine, once again, it holds self-sufficient hardware to run any of the old machines, new hardware, new software, because actually it combines together the FPGA with Sea of Gates, where you could emulate your hardware in a clock accurate uh, fashion. And also it has a Linux environment. So you could run your applications, either software, or hardware, or two together. And then has all the connectivity. So all the connectivity means that uh, you have uh, the possibility to connect to another board like that through Ethernet, through internet, wirelessly or through the wire, and then also uh, share your design in the cloud, etc. Because as we know, MSX self-sufficient system, like even MSX1, you can develop the applications on this machine, right? So you can, you can build all what you want to build on this machine. You don't need the IBM PC for that. So same goes for Raspberry Pi. So on Raspberry Pi, all the applications you can build on Raspberry Pi, and you don't need any, anything else. On this board, whatever you'd like to build for the software, you can build on this like on the Raspberry Pi. For the hardware, you need a quite high performance computer because still, this is a limited machine. So here you have only one gigabyte, gigabyte of RAM. So to run a compiler for FPG, you need eight to 16 to 64 gigabytes. And the appetite, grows faster than, than the device for which you program. So maybe in five, 10 years, you need a machine with 64 gigabytes of RAM, mandatory the minimum amount of size to compile your design. So therefore, this is gonna be in the cloud. So 
what's in here also is a communication layer. Because the communication layer to, to be able to connect uh, this uh, single board computer to the cloud, so such that still you don't need anything in, a, uh, in addition to the, to the single board computer to develop your applications. So we can go to the next page, please. So uh, quickly, I don't, I'm not going to uh, go in all the technical details, but it's a, uh, it's a view of the internal architecture. So uh, basically, in black, this is the connectivity. So this is what you have on the single board computer. Obviously, it can be powered by the USB-C uh, power, and also you have communications to the host terminal. This is for the development purposes. Then you have the, the, the memory on SD card. So uh, if you're a simple user, you could have stack of SD cards with some applications. You'd like to run machine one or machine two. Let's say you have Atari ST, you have Commodore Amiga, you have MSX123 Turbo R or something new with 9990 support. You could have an SD card dedicated for that, as simple as that. If something breaks, so to unbreak the system, you just change SD card. So it's a safety also. You don't have a situation where something is broken, partition is broken, the, the, the machine is brick, is dead. So then you have USB 2.0 connectivity. This is for, this is on the go. Uh, it's not USB-C for several reasons. One, is, one of the reasons is simplicity, because the, the, the Nishi son wanted absolutely to have this uh, computer of credit card size or Raspberry Pi size that shouldn't be bigger. And therefore, it's extremely dense. So basically, there is no space on the board. I mean, of course, we can make it much more complicated. But then it will increase significantly the complexity of the PCB. So here is some sort of a balance. I mean, the good thing about the design is to find the balance between the complexity and, uh, and of course, the, the, the production, you know? the simplicity of the production. So here is kind of the right balance. So it's still easy to produce, but it's already complicated enough to have the whole single board computer on, on this credit card size machine. So, and mechanically, it's quite interestingly organized. So all the high connectors, like Ethernet, you could say, where is the Ethernet? There is no Ethernet on this board. Actually, the Ethernet is on a breakout. So the transformers and the large connectors, they on a breakout add-on, which costs nothing, so it's a very simple thing. So basically, it doesn't create any problem to stack up the boards, one on top of the, on the other. Also, there are many, many questions about the bus, which is called zero bus. Why it's called zero bus? Actually, initially, we thought about zero, it's like zero hassle, zero burden. So we, it's simple. So you just stack up systems, you don't want to assign Previously, who is master, who is slave, who takes the bus ownership, etc. They figure it out between themselves, like in original MSX concept. You plug in the, the cartridge, you switch on the power, and you run immediately the system. It auto-configures and runs the drivers, and everything is integrated like a whole system, and it's expanded. Here is the same thing. And zero bus means that you can go through in communications between Engines like this, or engines and peripheral cards, or engines and probes, and many other things. So, and still, you have a very decent throughput. So, in terms of throughput, you have like two gigabits per second on the bus. If you go from card number one to card number 16, so basically back, back to back communications. And also, there are some dedicated links between adjacent cards up to 10 gigabits per second. This is to stream video stream data, etc. So if you're amateur, you don't need to go into this deep technical details, you'd like just GPIO. Very simple input-output to program and to run your application. You don't need anything. You just you put a connector on a PCB, you break out this connector to something where you could solder, and that's done. And you could do it on a single layer PCB. That's simple. If you'd like to develop the digital video application, like HDMI or anything like that, again, you put the connector. Just the connector, but you go to some other pins. You need, of course, to keep some, some basic um, regulations about signal integrity, but this is not difficult. If you develop something very advanced, 
So you'd like to have a separate computer, let's say heterogeneous system. Let's say you, you would like to integrate any kind of, I don't know, risk five or anything like this, then you need to implement the auto configuration, uh, auto configuration mechanism such that this board will be able to automatically detect, configure and talk to your hardware and integrate automatically without conflicts and anything like that. So, um, uh, please, next slide. So, what you have seen before is right now on the top. So, this is the MSX engine. MSX bus is, is basically breaks this, this screen on two parts, top part and bottom part. On the bottom part is something what you have on this carrier. Even I, I have a problem to call it a motherboard because there is nothing on it. There is a power supply part. So, you can see it's just one corner here and a little bit in there, it's a power supply. Why? Because this card can be powered by USB-C, right? Or it can be powered through the stack. And since uh, the power consumption of this card is two watts, from two watts to four watts, so it's quite a lot of power. So USB-C cannot power the whole stack. This is obvious because the whole stack will consume <coughs> at least 30 watts, but it could go even, even up to like 60 watts. There are two problems, how to dissipate the heat, energy, and how to also uh, basically provide all this power. Therefore, there is a high voltage supply, and therefore this card can be also powered by power, uh, power over Ethernet. So we can receive power through power over Ethernet, so you, you connect the plug for Ethernet, and this card can be straight powered by the Ethernet cable, or through the USB-C, or through the, through the carrier. So, and, and the carrier, as you can see, it has nothing but some little extensions. For instance, here, there are level shifters, just level shifters to, to be 5 volt compliant. So you could hook up your good old MSX cartridges and they will feel in this machine like home. Very last slide, maybe, here, very quickly. Where we can, uh, where we can uh, play with the applications. So green bubbles is where the, the user enters his applications. Basically, you, you, we, 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 like everybody likes in the computer science onion shells an analogy to this. So basically, uh, we provide the ecosystem around your applications to fit without the conflict into this card. So basically, you can develop your code and the rest of it, like development environment, is provided as a part of this of the system. So let's let's run the demo. Maybe afterwards, just two, two words about it as I prepare the demo. So it's not just a speech, but also the demo component. So we have a system running. Let me do the trick and see if it works. So I connect mini HDMI to the system, like that. And then I hook just the power like that, and we press go, and the system boots, and we will see if we have something on the screen. Should have, by now. And this demo, I'm not very humble for this demo, why? Because instead of putting something magnificent like Turbo R or 2 plus application, I put the game which I saw the first time when I saw the MSX machine. It was in 1985, and it was a pyramid of Konami. So I, <laughs> I have a big attachment to this, and I decided to put it as a, a, as a demo. And the, and, the, and the sound, and of course we have a sound. I mean, let's improvise, so we can just connect the sound like that, like this, and I think, I don't know if we can hear anything like this. Right, so. <laughs> so that's it. This is a demo. Thank you. Uh, I will do the demonstration of remote desktop. Uh, 
before that, I would like to show you uh, my history. I was I was student uh, fourth grade. Fourth grade, we got uh, 80-80, and uh, we decided to uh, make a, a PC. 1983, uh, I designed, I started to design in 1938. This is Nishi-san, Dr. Nishi. Uh, this is Bill Gates. And uh, this is me. A uh, little bit younger than now. <laughs> and this is my boss at that time. So uh, he is the reason uh, I could not join the V9990 project. So, and then here is a breadboard of V9938. V and this is the uh, output of this breadboard. So we can display two, in 256 colors. OK. We move to a demo, remote desktop demo. Here is a Wi-Fi router. Now we use this. And here is a Windows PC. Now we use this. And, and this is a MS-0 uh, stack. So now we start to demo. This is the remote desk desktop. Uh, and then this display. And I, I have to the IP address. This is uh, this uh, remote desktop display. And same. Yeah. So now we run some kind of basic software. Oh. Next. We use MSX0 card. Thank you. 
Thank you. And then Okay, next demo. This is a Zanak. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.